something that uh, it's really changed my life. There's a very wide age range. Anime is Japanese animation. Basically, that's just what it is. I would say uh, the disco is one of my favorites. Any of the Gundams were real good. I always enjoyed stories. I'm at the anime convention because we don't really know anyone who else is into it, so we came here to like to meet more people. There's pretty much a convention somewhere in the United States every weekend. We travel about 800 miles. To have a place that you can have fun and do that might be a throwback to the old uh, outdoor concerts or indoor concerts of the 60s and 70s, where you had all oh, thousands of people coming in for a communal activity, and they're just out to have fun in a very positive way. You know, it's nice to talk to people that are excited about it. Fan is short for fanatic. It's like Afrojack. You just do. That's exactly, That's exactly it. It's basically just a community that enjoys, you know, one thing, no matter who you are. Race, religion, age, gender. All that's gone for just a weekend. And really, for that time, we're almost like one. We're kind of like Venom. We are fandom. I hate the word cosplay. I have no real good reason for hating the word. It just bugs the crap out of me. There's already a word that means costume. It's costume. Just say costume. Um, I happen to be standing here next to my boyfriend here, dressed as Ren from Nana. If you couldn't tell, I am Nana O from Nana. I'm standing here in front of Jesus. You know, the son of the Lord, the Savior. It's great. From what I can tell, it's a, a costume play from Japan. A negative thing about cosplay is when you tell people who have no idea what it is, they totally think you're weird, and it, uh, it's just kind of uh, frustrating sometimes because it's not really that weird. There's a lot of re different reasons that people cosplay. Because I like the way the costume looks. <laughs> you don't have to worry about, oh, well, this is a kiddie show. Over here, you'll get criticized if you're 32 years old and you go to a convention unless it's Comic-Con dressed up as Spider-Man. <laughs> but, you know, you go to a convention dressed up as an anime character and nobody really cares because it's not aimed at a specific age group. I can choose characters based off of kind of what are my own personal preferences and maybe something that, that I, I like the ideal of or I like what they're trying to say in the game. And I really want to bring that to life because by doing that it shows my support of them and it also kind of shows a little bit about who I am. I don't think cosplaying people are weird. I think it's kind of cool because they enjoy doing it and they don't care what other people think. And it looks friggin' awesome. First of all, they, need, uh, they appreciate anime. Second of all, they are creative. I love how memorable like the scenes are. The people are just playing with the, whatever character that they're portraying. They do it full heartedly. Like, I know these guys aren't um, anime, but uh, we had the monarch and his two minions. And they actually got the voices on just right, and he's commanding people, and he's telling them, what is that? Give that to me. And it's just so funny. I love that. Where is he? Where is Venture? Minions! Listen to me. Listen very carefully. I will only explain this once. These little launchers, they're malfunctioning because I made them out of cups. On the bottoms of these cups that I cut out, I put on my ears. Also to amplify sound, protect me against blows. Uh, this is a, well, this is actually a wig I cut up and glued to my face. But if it wasn't, it would be real. I would shoot you all. Or something, I don't know. 21, take over. Do it. Rock on. If you look around at the convention with all the costumes, you see 
better costuming or at least as good as what's coming out of Hollywood production because the kids actually care about the characters. I did make this costume myself. I had a little bit of uh, kind of logistical help from other people, but I did do all the sewing myself. I never had a reason to sew before I learned about cosplaying. We are hosting a cosplay panel. Our panel is on how to construct cosplay. This sword is kind of a ridiculous, eclectic mix of things. Uh, it actually is completely hollow inside. It's like a pinata. It's primarily paper mache. Uh, there's a lot of toilet paper on it. <laughs> but the amount of time that it went into it, I would not like sell like a, a replica of this for less than a couple hundred. This is actually the fourth one I've made. Um, the first one broke because it wasn't reinforced properly and swinging it too hard actually twisted it and caused it to fall apart. It's like styrofoam on the inside. It's like the flower wreaths that you get in a craft store. I took two of them and glued them together because it's it wasn't thick enough and it's dangling by, it's got two straight pins, one in there, one in there, and a piece of thread, and there's a magnet in here, and a magnet in there, so that when I tip it, it doesn't move and sway and swing around. I am cosplaying as um, Sora from Kingdom Hearts 2 with a little kick to it. My name is Amber, I'm cosplaying Lord Sashomaru from Inuyasha. This is a wig. <laughs> This right here is a wig. This is not my real hair. I'm actually bald under this. As a matter of fact, there was five people involved in this costume. I made the fluff with a little bit of help. Um, a girlfriend of mine, her mother-in-law, made the armor. She's a professional so seamstress. Um, I actually commissioned the kimono and the hakma pants. The boots are from Payless, and everything else is from eBay. Uh, my costume cost about $140 to uh, be built. It, it would say it would cost about $600 to make the entire costume. The creative and artistic part about cosplay is how to innovate things that do not exist into outfits that look like they stepped out of the game. Like, okay, what do I need? Like, I've got some glowing eyes over there. What do I need to do to make them glow? What do I need to do to make them glow safely on top of my eyes? A lot of people think I'm <laughs> fake. They think it's animatronic. Or they just run up and hug me. Just all, all out love. The cosplay community is very supportive. The thing about the community of cosplayers that I like more than anything is just the absolute freedom and the absolute just personality that comes out when you're wearing a costume. We have a major rave going on right now. It is much craziness going on. I think Luigi's in there. I don't know where he is. I'm very, very afraid for him. Lots and lots of people. I don't know what's going on here. Party Haru! Oh, what do I like best about the industry? Uh, what I really love about the anime industry, uh, first and foremost, is as a fan, getting to come to conventions like this one here, Mizumi Con in San Antonio, uh, getting to meet other fans like me, getting to meet people of, you know, of like mind, uh, getting different perspectives on things, being able to, you know, share my perspectives with other people who uh, may, you know, who are into it. The North American anime culture, the first time I ever went to an anime con, I, I just sat there behind my table scared to death. Just, I didn't know what to think. They, these people were so bizarre and they were wearing these costumes and I was just, that's more flesh than I ever wanted to see on anybody, you know, and it was hard to tell who was the girls and who was the boys and vice versa. And it, it was just bizarre. And, and, you know, a month later I went to my second con and it, uh, you know, the longer I hang out at cons and the more I do this, the more I realize that convention kids are probably the greatest group of kids you could ever hope to hang around with. They're honest and they just want to have a good time and they know how to have fun without having to get drunk or get stupid or anything like that. They're just honest, really good kids and you know I'd rather do this for the rest of my life than ever have to teach another class in high school or ever have to do another Ren fair. I would do this forever just because the kids are amazing, really. I can't say enough good things. You will get the odd person who will come up with uh, crazy ideas. This is the effect of two Akatsuki, well rather Toby obsessive kids on YouTube. We were looking up random stuff and we came upon Carmel Dancing, which is about a minute 40 of this repeated. And right now we have it on a loop for the con. And it's actually drawn a lot of attention, so we're really proud of it. 
the fact that I'm dressed as Toby doing it just adds that sense of accomplishment. dressed up like this and I wouldn't go you know hang out and talk about the same kind of things that I would talk about over here I would not be as open as I am cosplayers are always open they're always out there for you to see and they're really great people every one of them I think this community is nice to have it's somewhere that people like us can vent because when we try and talk to I would say normal people they like to criticize us and put us down and make us feel bad but here everybody fits in I'm just happy to be able to come and see people who love the same thing I do and not feel like an outsider, you know? Most people in anime conventions are outcasts from other circles, except amongst themselves. So what we do is we spread the love amongst each other with hugs. So we all hold signs and offer hugs to one each other to show that we can love too. Oh God. <laughs> These are how many hugs I've been collecting since Friday. I, I probably have over 500. I have no clue. I've just been collecting hugs. There are a lot of gestures and uh, lingo, if you will, that are associated with the otaku culture. Um, one of them, of course, being otaku. In Japan, otaku is seen as a derogatory statement toward people who just devote themselves fully to anime and manga. Um, they just dive right in. They no remorse. They that's all they want out of life. I'm working at Big Steve's store right now to actually get free manga in the end uh, for so many hours of working. Nope, I'm not getting any money for this. Over in America, we've kind of taken that to heart and we wear it almost like a badge of honor. You know, I'm an otaku. Hear me roar, or meow, or whatever otaku do. Pika pika. And uh, there's some other terms out there. This usually applies to fangirls. Would be that if you see a character that, uh, someone that's cosplaying as a character you really like, the best thing to do instead of just running up and glomping them, which is a, a term for a combination tackle hug, um, go up and introduce yourself and say, hi, I'm so-and-so, and can I glomp you? Oh, God. Um. Well, they probably didn't know about this. Last year, we went to JFAX, and I got separated from them briefly. I got dive-tackled by six Naruto fans and one Gendo Ikari on the grass. So here was this Turk lying on his back on the grass, and I couldn't breathe because one of them was slightly overweight. <laughs> um, I don't think that like cosplaying people are weird for cosplaying, but some of the people who do cosplay are pretty weird. This one guy, we're not too sure if... His orientation. Yes, and uh, last convention, there's a thing called crossplay and that's what he did. Crossplay is where like a guy dresses as a girl or a girl dresses as a guy. Don't get strung up by the way I look. Don't judge a book by its cover. I'm not much of a man. There's a lot of great cosplayers. There's Card Captor Will, who's at this con. Yep. Uh, he uh, he dresses up as various female characters, but totally just to get some. And I guess according to his track record, yeah. it does. Pretty high success rate. Yeah. My real name is uh, Will English, but everyone knows he me here as Card Captor Will. Um, I do a lot of things, but my primary role here at Yomakan is the, um, I am the MC, the master of ceremonies for most of the events. Anime likes to appeal to pervs. Uh, hentai is basically anime that has a uh, center point or plot around uh, sexual activity. This is the anti-hentai fan. You just whack it across people even though it doesn't hurt very much. It makes a good point. You can go one. Where should we start? Hentai. Well, it's Japanese for pervert or perverted, so obviously it's porn. Yeah. There is a porn in Japan for anything you can imagine. Uh, there's even one that I was told about, the raw meat on feet porn, where basically it was women. 
getting raw hamburger, ground chuck, yum, 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 ground into their feet. No sex involved, just raw meat on feet. Hentai might be one of the most diverse genres in anime. A lot of people take cosplay to the extreme. I'm a Yukon staffer. My name is Haley Dandridge. Yukon security isn't that hard. People here are friendly. There's not too many things we have to break up. It's usually a sleazy older men group and younger women. That's the problem. Uh, we had a guy in a wheelchair dressed as Gihara, and since his uh, character is the pervert sage, he thought that he could use that to stay in character. I saw this guy in a wheelchair and he asked me for a hug and I totally went for it. Then he started, he grabbed me really hard and he started kissing me on the neck and then I pulled away and he still grabbed me and I had a, I reported it. So we had to kick him out. Security guy took his badge, he's wearing it around like a trophy. <laughs> oh. Though uh, I suppose there wasn't anything, there was not something said, but I can, I can tell you what was something that was done. Uh, right after the Wallflower premiere in, in, uh, Houston at OniCon, I had gone out to the artist alley to, uh, speak to my girlfriend who had, uh, her table set up. I was not dating her at this time. i delving into my personal life at the moment. Um, but I was talking with her. We were just discussing, you know, how the panel went and all of a sudden, I feel, a pair, I feel a pair of arms come around me from behind and just lock really tight around my abdomen. And I, I kind of looked back, and I could see a mat of brown hair. To me, it looked like uh, a member of the staff for the convention that I was really good friends with. And I, I just kidding with her, thinking I was kidding with a friend, said, Hey, you, what are you doing? And I hear this very unfamiliar, high-pitched little voice go, Hugging Kyohei. And... Uh, about then and there, I'd realized that something had gone horribly wrong. Um, it was it was very sincere. It was very you know. Uh, she, I know she meant no harm, but a uh, little advice for fans out there: if you want to give a voice actor a hug, ask permission first. Because I don't, I won't take it this way. But there are some people who would consider that harassment or assault. So got to be careful where you are, and be careful who you do it to. Because some people may not be in the mood to be hugged or glomped at whenever you feel like giving one. Western states, they haven't exactly uh, taken animation seriously. Usually they dismiss a lot of things as just being um, stuff for kids. My name's Amelie Belcher. I'm originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but now I live in Austin, Texas, and uh, I'm a professional comic artist. I got into drawing web comics because it's cheaper than therapy, uh, which is the standard answer, but I got into drawing web comics because I was in a terrible job serving bagels to sorority girls in Baton Rouge, and um, I hated it. And uh, every day I come home with these awful stories about how much I hated uh, working for sorority girls and making bagels and having to explain them what a BLT is repeatedly and uh, I uh, had a friend with a website and he wasn't doing anything with it and he said hey you should do a webcomic and I said okay so you know one piece of paper and a sharpie later I had my first comic up and within a few days I had my first piece of fan mail and it's been a you know slippery downhill slope ever since you know. Japanese animation uh, has inspired my art a great deal. Um, I used to not care for it at all. I used to teach uh, high school art classes, and when the kids would bring in their anime, they refused to improve in any kind of way because they were not learning from the environment around them and only learning from a set of comics. And it would drive me crazy, so I had a major hate for anime. And uh, then some friends of mine made me watch uh, Ranma One Half and Cowboy Bebop and uh, kind of fell in love with it. And uh, after that, I started making my eyes a little bigger on my characters, and I found that people liked them more. People don't respond quite as much as they used to to the more American Disney style of art, but uh, the minute you throw big eyes and you know, tiny nose and no mouth on a character, people, you know, they're in love with you. So uh, it just kind of transformed my style, and now I, I can't help but draw anime even if I don't want to. <laughs> 
The other differences are the fact that anime in Japan is more of an independent film industry and should be looked at it that way. In Japan, they don't really have the space for the movie studios too much, so they have lots of anime studios. While they may have focused groups that they're trying to appeal to, while they have target audiences, they know that other people are watching it too. They don't just try and make kid shows. One thing that a lot of people don't realize about anime is it covers just about all the different genre. You have everything from uh, anime that, you know, very serious subjects, um, definitely drama related. You have historical anime. You have things that are romance. You have comedy. You have children's. You have uh, things that I would not let anyone related to me watch. <laughs> I mean, right now I could probably go down into a dealer's room. Let's say I was looking for a supernatural detective love story. I could probably find five different manga titles that fit that exact same small like little sub sub genre it's so diverse it's just it's amazing you can find whatever you want there are a lot of big differences between western animation styles and japanese animation styles um anime uh you know has been around for a very long time uh but it was inspired a great deal by disney if you look at astro boy he's basically the same character as mickey mouse the proportions on his hair and the proportions on his eyes and face, you know, even what he wears is basically Mickey Mouse. But over the years, it evolved into something totally different. Um, a great deal of the similarities between American and Japanese is not necessarily, you know, all about stylization and pink hair and whatnot, but it's about classic proportions and cartoon characters. Uh, Japanese animation tends to have very large eyes and very small mouths. And if you look at Bugs Bunny, he's got very large eyes and very small mouth. Disney characters, huge eyes, small mouth. And these are classic proportions you find on a baby, which is why we're so drawn to these characters, because they have some sort of basic innocence behind them, which is hilarious, because most anime winds up blowing up a planet or something. So. You really want to get technical, it's frame rate. Uh, a lot of people say that anime, in general, is, is more uh, artistically uh, accurate. I don't know if that would be the, the proper way to say it, that they, they focus more on anatomy and are true to anatomy. It's not the case most of the time. There's, there's always a stylization when it comes to any sort of animation. Anime is actually, in a lot of ways, not produced as, uh, there's not a lot, there's not as much effort put into it, I guess is one way to say. Uh, anime, on average, is animated at about 15, anywhere from 15 to, at most, I believe, 20, 21 frames a second. Uh, which is why you see, very often, the characters standing still, and, you know, just the mouth flaps, or a cutaway, the character that will be talking will have his back to the camera, while the character they're talking to is just standing there, listening, and not moving at all. Uh, it's because, you know, and uh, they definitely have a lot more, uh, they definitely have a lot a lot of time constraint when it comes to creating anime over there uh, in Japan. But uh, it seems to me that, uh, for the most part, they do focus a lot more on putting effort into uh, the backdrops and, and the coloring, all the, uh, it's, it's always, I've always been very impressed. American animation, on the other hand, while yes, in a lot of ways, uh, we see it as just something for children. Lately, there has been a lot of you know sh great shows that have uh, cartoons that have been focused more towards adults or you know, kind of the middle ground. Uh, it's almost always done at around 30 frames per second. Uh, always a little bit more vibrant. Yes, unfortunately, I, I do see a trend in a lot of, especially some shows that Cartoon Network seems to be putting out lately where they're just going for overly simplified character design, something that's very easy to do, don't, that, and it, it looks trashy, I would say, um, or, uh, even worse, sometimes they'll, they'll, uh, they seem to take from Japanese creators and take from the anime style and try to incorporate that into their shows, Teen Titans is an example, but I love Teen Titans. It was a really great show. It was written great, great performances. It's a 
badass show. I feel that Japanese animation is a lot more thought out, a lot more well developed, and absolutely the art is stunning. They're breaking grounds as far as just how beautiful the artwork is, how amazing they can make it. They get across the feeling and the mood of the entire scene, movie, whatever, and they do it in, while keeping as much detail as they can. It's not all just about, um, you know, silly characters and different colored hair. The big thing is look at anime as a film art. Where are you going? Why are you going? If you look at the end of Cowboy Bebop, which is actually inspired by American films, you take the ending of the show where Faye goes back to discover her past. I would compare to any of the uh, older European film styles. I do have a, a background in classical art. I uh, was uh, trained in classical painting and drawing and portraits. And uh, I taught uh, high school art for four years uh, as a teaching assistant while I went to college. And I also went uh, on the road doing Renaissance fairs. When I went back to college a few years ago to try to finish up my degree at Louisiana State University, I had a professor who gave us the assignment we could paint whatever we wanted all semester long as long as we had six completed canvases and we had to be able to defend our work and it all had to relate to each other. Well, I started painting gaming characters and anime characters, but as real people and he kept asking, you know, who's this? I'm like, it's Sephiroth from Final Fantasy. Well, who's this? It's Ed Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. And uh, right there in front of the entire class, he turns around and he says, why are you painting cartoon characters? And I said, because I know I can sell them. And he said, Amelie, there's no way you can make a living selling Japanese style cartoons. And that's when I realized the man hadn't actually left the campus in 10 years because I have been making a living selling Japanese style cartoons. I was paying for my college by selling Japanese style cartoons. It's the number one form of comic books in the world right now and the number one most studied form of art in the world right now. And that's when I said, you know what, LSU, not so much. But uh, most professors, most teachers don't want it in their classroom for a variety of reasons, one of which being it's unfamiliar to them. They don't understand. It's alien and they don't know how to teach it because they don't know how to appreciate it. The other being that a lot of students bring it in the classroom trying to draw anime and manga without having a firm background in drawing real things, three-dimensional drawing, real people, real things, you know, perspective and muscle structure, bone, you know, just real things, you know, and you try to draw something as simplistic and as simplified as an anime character, which is basically a very simplified version of a very complex three-dimensional thing, the human body, you're going to run into walls and, and, and difficulties. And that's why most teachers don't want in their classroom, because these kids are not going to learn, because all they're doing is looking at another comic for reference without knowing exactly what it is that comic is supposed to be from the beginning. Well, there's fan subbing. Mm -hmm. That's something uh, that happens uh, before we get an official release over here on anime. Uh, fan subbing is when fans take it and they subtitle. Uh, I know a lot of the big names like Bandai, you know, the, the, the producers over here or publishers over here uh, tend to kind of find it as a gray area or frown upon. Here, and a lot of companies actually pick it up because it is big on a fan sub. So really, fan subbers keep the anime going. They keep it alive for the most part. Some organizations would say, no, no, but the real truth is, if it weren't for the fan subbers and for the people that carried in the grassroots, there wouldn't be the big uh, things now. If it weren't for fan subbers, underground stuff, they'd have never got out. Hello, my name is Josh Greeley. I am an anime voice actor for ADV Films and Funimation Entertainment. I'm also an ADR script writer for ADV Films. The Ministry of Foreign Trade in Japan, through uh, actual uh, through the Japanese government, so in you know in a sense the Japanese government itself issued a plea, a written plea, to the American to the United States government, which said, and I quote, 
please assist us in, in stopping the illegal piracy that is killing our animated content, our animated properties. What's the thing that's animated coming out of Japan? That's anime. And it, it's just, it's really sad, especially considering once that, once that hit on Anime News Network and all the other American, you know, anime news sites, I saw, I saw a comment left in the posts on Anime News Network, I, I believe it was, and this person was not alone in his comment, and you'll have to excuse my language. The quote was, and as a fan, I never thought I would hear this as from another somebody claiming to be an anime fan. After a written plea from the Japanese government for help in stopping piracy, which is crippling and killing the their creative anime industry, American fans on uh, on this website were saying, and I quote: "Japan opened their little island to the world. They deserve whatever the hell they get." It's it boggles my mind. I, I as a kid, I, I work in anime. I and even as a fan, I make in the anime industry less money than the woman that says "Welcome to Walmart," but she gets benefits. I can't afford to buy anime DVDs, but I do. I, I've been buying them since I was a kid, even when uh, when my allowance was only. Uh, couple of cents a week or a couple of dollars a week I would do extra chores I would do a whole bunch of I would volunteer for my family that lived nearby me in the countryside to go do you know to mow their lawn and do anything I little I could as just a little kid to earn some extra cash so that I could buy the next Dragon Ball Z tapes that were coming out from Funimation you know two months later I when I got my first job living in my little small town my, my working in a grocery store I couldn't afford to drive an hour and a half every weekend to a Sam Goody and, and spend 40 to $50 per VHS on an anime VHS, but I did. Even when there was a bin of fan sub tapes in the entranceway to Sam Goody, I didn't take it. I've never bit torrented an anime. I have never, I've never downloaded a scanlation of a manga. As a fan, I do what all fans do. Anyone who says they are a fan do. I support what I am a fan of in its success. What does that mean? That means I help contribute to it being able to create more. That is what we are supposed to do as anime fans is help it succeed. If we want to see more, you got to exchange some currency somewhere along the line. It's the people with this mentality of I'm a fan, therefore I and privy to it, therefore I deserve getting this for free. It's just ridiculous. That's that's it's it's such a irresponsible, uh, it's such a, a childish frame of mind to be in, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not pulling. I I don't. I try not to pull punches. We've been fighting this fight for four years. It's it's been it's four years going now. Uh, an industry as niche as small as the anime industry is really is. Cannot serve, cannot compete with that sort of piracy, that level of piracy. And uh, so, yeah, if you're, uh, if you, if you watching this are a fan and and you feel that, and you actually, you know, are hearing what we're telling you, and if you have done the research for yourself and you have seen what is going on in this industry, that it is dying. Uh, if you are sitting here and you don't know what you can do to help, you're asking yourself, what can I do to help? I think I can tell you exactly where you can go to get that information. There was a wonderful website that was actually created by fans who saw the problem. Uh, it's called SaveOurAnime.com. Please visit it. It has tons of great information that you could uh, that you could use uh, to not only debunk the myths of fan subbing, not only for yourself but for others who may be doing it as well. Uh, it has several video links. Interview like uh, there was an interview, a panel that Shinichi Watanabe Nabashin did, like straight from the horse's mouth, a Japanese creator talking about how what his views on it were and how it is killing the industry. And uh, both of Greg Ayer's uh, two-hour fan subbing uh, panels on fan subbing and piracy are also linked there as well. 
I encourage you to please check them out, get the information, and spread the word. And help us out, you know, save our anime, because we're the only ones who can. Most of the animes Kim mentioned started off as just small clubs meeting in garages, in libraries, in college campuses, um, just as an excuse to people to bring in their bootleg copies of whatever and show it off. I used to know, know the guy that run a local fan sub group was Kota Cha. I used to give him unsubbed anime and I used to get all the fan subs from him. And uh, we were providing him a lot of stuff for years until it got more mainstream. It used to be you couldn't, you, go, you would see uh, four, uh, four or five generation copies of uh, anime and you were glad to get it. Now it's like prime run, you could get it off the internet. So we used to have a lot of sci-fi conventions, we still do here in the United States, but that demographic seems to have gotten a little older and we really don't have the young sci-fi shows that really grab the uh, audience the way the sci-fi used to. So anime seems to have filled in that niche. It, it kind of exploded in the last 10 years. Uh, what really got all jumped off as far as I'm concerned was when um, Dragon Ball Z ended up on Toonami. That, and Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing and stuff like that, that was the first mainstream jump. And then suddenly after that we got all those requests and all these people who only seen Dragon Ball want to know more. What does a scouter say about his power level? It's, it's over, over 9,000! <laughs> Do I really have to say it? No. Got video games? There, he said it. My name is Rachel, and I'm very low minion as far as the gaming staff is concerned. My main job is to assist the head gaming staff and to guard rooms like I'm doing now, make sure everybody has a badge, make sure nobody's abusing the equipment. Uh, we have Soul Calibur, um, Dance Dance Revolution, Tekken, we have a percussion machine. What is about to happen is uh, 1v1 tournaments for Super Smash Brothers, and we have the four stock option, the level is Final Destination, there's no time limit, and it's just pretty much straight skill against skill alone. 50 players until the last person is going to win $120. Super Smash Brothers Melee is a GameCube game where sometimes generally you can play four players at once, but it's often like Mario characters and like uh, often like just the generic Nintendo, everything that we know, all put together into a fighting game and just kind of pretty much jumbled into one big uh, butt mash game. Hey, I'm John Stork. You guys might know me as Hyper Strike from the second season of Who Wants to Be a Superhero. I am at Yomacon here in Michigan, and we are about to do a Super Smash Brothers Melee tournament, and that's like my favorite game ever, so couldn't be more excited right now. You know, the, the funny thing with this game is uh, me and my brother were playing the original one for the N64 right up until the day that the new one came out. It's my, it's my favorite multiplayer game ever. Another interesting thing about the whole anime community is that a lot of the voice actors and the stars around here, they'll you can just go up and talk to them and they'll talk to you. We're actually in the line for the autographs for Quentin Flynn and Jeff Nimoy. We're obsessed with Quentin. I actually drew a picture out for him to sign. My name is Patrick Seitz and I'm a voiceover actor, uh, anime script adapter, and ADR director. I've probably worked on about 60 different anime titles and maybe 20, 25 video games. So I haven't had really anyone go go super duper crazy. You go to a larger convention and you see them following a voice actor around. You're like, wow, the fact that they know what the voice actor looks like to follow them is sort of weird because this isn't an on-camera actor. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a voice actor. Hi, I'm Shannon Blado. And I just met Quentin Flynn and Jeff Nimoy. Uh, getting the opportunity to meet Jeff and Quentin is a huge honor. Quentin has inspired me to pursue voice acting. That's something that I've wanted to do since I was little, since I was 12. And Jeff has, of course, he's directed Digimon, and that's um, that was the show that really got me into voice acting. Like, okay, 
like the director and like the producer and everything from Digimon's gonna be here and I'm so excited. <laughs> gonna get his autograph, I'm gonna hug him, and it's gonna be great. Oh I of course I think they're cute. I love them. Yes. Quentin yes. Flynn is very sexy. He's very hot. Look at him. He's cute. Yes, he's very sexy, isn't he? Jeff Nimoy is very sexy. Okay. <laughs> Both of them. Don't touch the question. Sexier? <laughs> They're both very hot, yes. <laughs> I just want to toss out some random shout out style love to the Spoonie Bards. They go to the cons, they drive butt far to get there, they set up, and they play music, and they entertain people all weekend long. I think they give way more to the con experience than I do. Uh, we're the Spoonie Bards, and we play a lot of video game and anime music by request. Through the past couple of years, we've been invited to more and more conventions uh, as more of them just kind of take notice of what we do and it's kind of become a almost once every other month sort of deal. The history behind the Spoonie Bard's name, after we first met in Anime Central 2004 and started playing, you know, people were like, we have to figure out a name. And we kind of settled on Spoonie Bard's, which is a reference to a quote in the game Final Fantasy IV in which this old guy gets really mad at this one bard prince for eloping with his daughter and in all his frustration, he calls him a Spoonie Bard. There's a tricky story to, to explain how we formed, because before the Bards were together, some of us knew each other through various avenues, and then we eventually came together and we met through anime conventions. If you ever get the chance, wherever you are out there in TV land, documentary land, you can see the Spoonie Bards, by all means, do it. They rock. Push it no. there. It's gonna go in here. See you next year. <laughs> I'm going home. I am planning on to attending Yumacon next year. Probably with the same friends I made here. Because the people I met here are freaking awesome. Unlike other people. And most people here I connect more with than in people I connect in with Indiana. People in Indiana are just like jerks. to you close as I wanna be close enough for me to feel your heart beating fast and stay there as I whisper how I loved your peaceful eyes on me oh did you ever know that I had my Share with me your love if you have enough The tears if you're holding back Or pain if that's what it is How can I let you know I'm more than the dress and the voice Just reach for me and then you will know that you are not dreaming.